this week on Addicted to the Outdoors. Well, it's time for John and Raven's annual daddy-daughter hunt. We are back in Nebraska with our good friend, Scott Kuhn. It's come a long ways. You know, it's been so much fun. Scotty guided Gina 15 years ago. Now, one of his twins is guiding one of our twins. I wasn't really nervous. I was more excited because like, I knew we would do it. If we pushed any closer, we'd have definitely got busted. They knew something was going on. Oh my God. You know, and then you can see her, you know, second guessing herself. You know, all the things that we all do as hunters. Born and raised by a hunting family in the swamps of Florida and shooting a bow by eight years old, John Brunson took to hunting early. Gina grew up fishing with her father but it was weekend hunting trips with John that put big game blood under her fingernails for the first time. Even now, with raising six kids and running three companies, John and Gina are still a fistful of dirt couple that take life by the antlers. Sound familiar? If so, pull up a stump with the Brunsons, because they are addicted to the outdoors. This week on Addicted, we are back in Nebraska with our good friend, Scott Kuhn. Well, it's time for John and Raven's annual daddy-daughter hunt. Yeah, I like I like them a lot. Definitely sometimes more than just like family hunts. No, I agree. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I love doing family Fun stuff. Fun to be away from Tough and Gunner for <laughs> once. <laughs> right. I think this will be our 17th year hunting uh, with Scott. You know, we first started hunting with Scott. His uh, kids were little kids. We've watched them grow up. We've been to their football games. We've watched them get married. We've watched them have kids. And you know, when I thought about getting Raven her first mule deer, of course, there was no other place on planet Earth I would rather go than Deer Meadows. And this year, she's finally getting to go to Deer Meadows Outfitters to meet the Kuhn family. We've always hunted whitetails, so it was just kind of like I wanted to do something different. You're always talking about how great this family is and how interesting they are. So yeah, I maybe. thought it's time to meet them finally. <laughs> and I'm really hoping her and John are able to bag her first muley on the same ranch that I got mine. Hey man, what's going on? Hey, is this the Sand Hill King? <laughs> <laughs> we, me and Raven around the way, we, we would like to order one big buck. <laughs> You never told me anything about your daughter. Hopefully she's taller than Gina so she can see over the yucca plant. <laughs> she is taller. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm not that short, am I? This place me and mom have been coming for 16 years. We finally got into camp and it was time for Raven to, you know, meet the Kewans that she felt like she knew already because she's been, you know, watching them on TV all these years, but this was actually her first time ever meeting them. We're here. <laughs> What's up, guys? Oh, what's up, big fella? Hi, I'm doing good. Good, good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Raven. Hey, how are you? Good, big guy. How are we doing? So this was a very special trip for me for a lot of reasons. I mean, you know, obviously being a daddy-daughter hunt is always special. Taking Raven to get her first mule deer ever to a place that we were this familiar with and a place that her mom, you know, had shot her first mule deer ever 15 years ago. <laughs> it's uh, it's come a long ways, you know, from staying in a trailer, right? You know, to to now, you know, we have this nice new lodge, and and now, you know, to have kids coming through, it's just it makes you feel old. But I mean, <laughs> it's you know, it's been so much fun. You know, when I talked to Raven about going and hunting Nebraska, she immediately said, "I want to hunt them the way you and Mom hunt." Them. Have a nice day. Yeah, you know, Raven, our little, you know, blonde haired, green eyed cheerleader who's super soft spoken and super quiet. When it's time to hunt, it, you know, there's a beast that comes out. 
I was trying not to like shake. No, it's good. That's it's freezing. <laughs> That's good shooting, babe. After we got done checking the bow, um, we headed back in. You know, we got to take a little time and obviously look at Browning trail cam picks at some different deer and some different bucks that we might go after. They're it's, so even. Like it is, isn't it? That's like per like very symmetrical. Like he was sideways. Too. Too. Yeah. You know, and to have two days to do it, two and a half days, we knew we were gonna have to to get after it. I wasn't really nervous. I was more excited because like I knew we would do it. <laughs> no matter what, <laughs> we're gonna like, do this. I knew we'd get it done. <laughs> See, she's got confidence in dad. <laughs> right. So that first morning we got up bright and early. You know, I could tell Raven was really excited. So we'll boogie up top, um, try and just get a different angle and just see if we can get eyes on him. I mean, right now the name of the game is got an idea where he's at. He's probably better with those other bucks. Yeah. But right now, the name of the game is getting up, trying to get some eyes on them while they're bedded. Yep. Out here, we've got thousands and thousands of acres. It's all private ground and privately leased. We just got mule deer running all over. Our herds are really healthy. If you really think about it, Scotty guided Gina 15 years ago on her first mule deer ever. You flash forward now 15 years, and now one of his twins is guiding one of our twins. Never would have thought that I'd be guiding you or let alone one of your daughters and stuff like that. I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. We get out there that first morning and it didn't take us too long to get on a big buck. That would be a, what the heck of a the first new deer. Oh yeah, that would be bigger than a lot of people shoot. Oh, like for it. sure, no doubt about it. So, you know, we get on this deer, we pretty much stay on him all day. Uh, we're trying to figure out where he's going, what he's doing. We're waiting on him to bed down. He's bedded back down over there. Well, that's good, right? In the tall stuff, yeah. I mean, he's... I like him over there. That's nice, all right, babe. So, we've spotted the, probably the top deer on your hit list. We've we got him spotted already. So as we're crawling up there, I'm gonna go in front and I'll just keep looking and ranging and seeing how close we can get. But once he stands up and you feel comfortable and you have it on him, you smoke. I mean, Raven did a great job. I mean, we snuck and snuck and snuck and snuck. Yeah, it was very different from sitting in a tree stand, especially the walking, that was very tiring because <laughs> we don't have hills in Florida. Well, we got our uh, we got our cardio, and we're at a little yeah. higher elevation, so <laughs> we, we definitely got a, got a little extra cardio in. I told Raven those sand hills are workout. Thirty-five yards, the top bug from right there. Need to come around and see if we can't get on yet. I mean, we had deer all around us, and between the wind and just cover, if we pushed any closer, we'd have definitely got busted. This is where the waiting game comes in. We sat out there all afternoon. I mean, Raven did a great job. I mean, I could tell she was excited. He was like right there at our fingertips, but he just was just really out of range for a shot for Raven with that crossbow. You know, after waiting and waiting and waiting, you know, most of the day, all of a sudden they start getting up and stretching. We're like, all right, let's get ready. You know, if they take a right, we're gonna get a shot at them. If they take a left, they're going to no man's land. Unfortunately, they went left, not right, and we really just had to sit there and watch them just walk off into the distance. Yeah, just set off. It's about that time, I suppose. This was disappointing, but for me, this was a really good thing because Raven was gonna get to experience what it's like to go spot and stalk mule deer. Yeah, I wasn't really nervous until like the first day when we waited for that buck for like pretty all much all day. <laughs> and then right when it walked away, I was like, crap. I was like, now I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, the strategy was really just shift gears and see if we can go get on another deer. We checked in with Scott and he said that he, you know, knew a couple of really good bucks that were coming down this ridge and heading to this alfalfa field. We're gonna go over here and look for this other buck he saw this morning. There wasn't the perfect spot where we felt like we could get a good shot, but we got in there, we got set up, we got to where we could see him coming down the ridge and we had a few shooting lanes through the uh, bells of hay to our right. So we felt like we were, you know, set up at least in a way that we could get one down. Sure enough, we see him start coming down the ridge. Dang, I come to the outside of that windmill get water and then, and then skirt this fence line. Or they're gonna come through. Right to the gate. 
The, the two shooters that were coming out that we were waiting on, they got almost all the way down the ridge and then they just stopped. And then they just kind of started milling around and looking back up the ridge and looking back at us and looking back at the ridge. So at that point, you know, we figured we, we were, the gig was probably up and we had to watch them walk back up the ridge. We could see him right up there silhouetted on the top of the ridge, you know, heading back from where they came from. While I'm definitely familiar with the highs and lows of hunting muleys in Nebraska, it's tough sometimes. And now things are getting down to the wire for John and Raven, so I'm crossing my fingers that today's the day. You know, we're excited, but a little nervous. You know, we know we got one day to get it done. We opted to go to this other farm that was a pretty good haul away. Um, drove, I think, 30, 40 minutes, got to the farm before light, set up, did a lot of glassing. I know Riley is on the same property looking for us also and he's seen what a couple shooters already yep so, yeah so is he just trying to see if they're gonna bed and see if they're and you know see if they're in a good spot mm -hmm. so if keep he, track of those so he keep track of those if they bed and he feels like they're in a good spot we'll roll and meet him yep We saw one decent shooter that we, we thought might bed that we could go after, and we just weren't really sure. So before we got out and started really burning some time, we decided to check in with the other guides. And Riley let us know that back on the main home ranch, close to camp, he had spotted a nice shooter that went and bedded down. He, he knew the general area he was in and felt like, you know, that it was a pretty good area and that we might be able to get a good stock on this thing. All right, so Riley's got few bucks spotted sounds like there's one or two shooters and he's been watching them while we were watching these other deer Travis is just gonna run up meet Riley you know get his eyes on the deer so he knows exactly where they're at so he can kind of figure out the best way to try and sneak on them you know kind of parked and started glassing because he didn't have the deer pinned down to where he could just say okay you know look here he's laying right there the name of the game at this point was try to really find this deer whether it was spot him from where we were at or whether it was start inching in closer and closer until we could get some eyes on this deer and hopefully you know get raven our first mule deer down We creeped and creeped and creeped. We had a good idea of what bowl the deer were in, but you gotta be really careful. You know, about the time you think they're in this bowl, they're in this bowl and you walk past them and they're staring at you. Okay, so I crawled up here and I saw the bugs are about a hundred yards away. We're gonna work around this ridge and uh, I'm gonna peek over and look. I can only see the top buck in the bowl, so I haven't seen him yet, all right? So we're just gonna work around, make sure there's nothing in these other cuts, but we'll work around and do that. You know, we creeped up, creeped up. Raven did a great job. I mean, you know, just, you know, super sneaky. We finally get up on the edge of this bowl that we think they're in. I'm gonna go look. He's supposed to be down at the bottom. So. I swear I can't see the As we're inching up on the lip of this bowl, boom, we can see the deer. When you guys were like trying to set it up, like I couldn't see the deer yet because I couldn't see over the hill. So I was like, oh my gosh, like, I have no clue what this deer looks like. <laughs> but you guys have been looking at it the whole time. So then finally when I got over the hill and I could see it, I was like, wow, I was like, that's pretty close. I'm trying to get focused on the deer. You know, when you're spotted to stalking these deer, this is the tough part. You know, it's nice to just throw it up on a tripod and get it above the weeds, but you can't do that because they'll pick you off this fast. So I'm trying to focus through the weeds and get focused on this deer. I look over at Travis and I'm like, listen, you know, I know we got Tacticams running on the crossbow that'll save our butt. So I told him right away, when she's ready to shoot, do not wait on me. Like I was setting up, but I kept sliding down the hill and I had to keep scooting up and I was like, oh my gosh, watch me slide down right when I shoot this deer. <laughs>
well, this deer did a crazy, you know, whip around turn. And when he did, you know, that arrow went in just in a goofy kind of spot. Well, at that point, you know, me and Travis instinctively, we didn't have to say anything to each other. We instinctively jumped up, we left Raven because we wanted to see at least the direction this deer was going in case we ended up having a long tracking job. Whenever you guys got up and you went to run, I was shaking like so bad. <sighs> That backwards camera is awesome because it, it, it captures real emotion, raw emotion. It doesn't lie. It gives you the real deal. <laughs> just this intensity that just really showed me how much she really loved this and enjoyed it. You know, she's not out there doing it because mom and dad do it, because we want her to. Jesus. That was crazy. You know, you could look into her face and know she is, this is something very special to her. Right when you guys like ran to go find them, I was like, okay, like I got it. Like I saw that I got it. But then when you guys started walking other directions, I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, did I just like miss this deer? I was like, I saw the arrow go into him, but like, did it not go into him? All right, you start second guessing. I was guessing. like, yeah, I got really nervous. <laughs> To see her go through those emotions that we all go through as hunters, it blew this trip out of the water for me. It made this entire trip worth everything. It was awesome and her reaction just made it that much better. That's why you guide, that's why we hunt, that's why we do it. I'm like shaking, I'm so, so nervous. Any type of marginal shot, we like to give an animal a little bit of time. We, you know, we start doing some wide circles and we're just not seeing anything, not seeing anything. And, we, and I'm like, you know, before we start going really wide and thinking this deer went, you know, 10 miles, I'm like, you gotta remember, we're shooting a schwacker. Let's go back to where she shot him and let's just make some small circles and let's just make sure he's not right there. Of course, we go back to where she shot the deer. We start making some small circles, <laughs> you know, and boom. I mean, this deer is piled up like 70 yards from where she shot him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, babe. Good job. Get your first muley. Let's go check out your first mule deer ever. It was just a big relief finding him actually there. It's your first muley ever. Oh, look at him. Wow, what a pretty buck. He's, it's even like his rock. He is, yeah, nice and symmetrical. And he's got little brows. What a buck, babe. That's my girl, that's my girl. First mule there ever, and you got it on the, at the same place with the same people that mom shot of hers 15 years ago. You were like two and you were like 12. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are 15 years later, and you know, Scott guided mom and Scott's son guided you. To see how big he is. Yeah, yeah, nice four by four and really symmetrical, really pretty deer. You know, that, that's an awesome, awesome, you know, first mule deer for sure. All right. Good job, babe. Congratulations. Thanks, Trav. You bet. Good job, man. Like always, freaking rocking and rolling. I got a chance to show uh, Travis the uh, easy gut. You know, those guys are always gutting deer out in the field, so I thought the easy gut would be a cool little thing to give Travis, uh, which makes it a whole lot simpler uh, gutting them out there than how they usually do it. So, you know, with no cell service out there, I know we were anxious to get back to camp so Raven could call mom. Well, what do you know? I'm in the kitchen getting dinner ready when I get a call from John and Raven with some fantastic news. Hello? Hey, babe. Hey. Did you see the picture I sent you? I did. It's awesome. All right, I'm sitting here with Raven. We got you on the speaker. She got her first her first muley down ever. It's the same place you got here. Sand Hills. Sand Hills. Sand Hills, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Was really good I definitely would come back meeting everyone like for the first time you'd think I would feel like weird but like I feel like I fit right in <laughs> like normally I'm really shy and it takes me a while to open up but like they've all pushed me way out there I'm pretty comfortable now <laughs> yeah you're, you're gonna get pulled right into the action here there's there's no there's no grace period well Deer Meadows Outfitters did it again and it was extra special that she took it from the same ranch where I got my first mule deer you know this trip definitely 
changed our perspective a little bit on Addicted. And, and that direction is gonna be youth. That direction is gonna be passing on our sport. That direction is gonna be getting our kids and kids out there to give them these experiences. A lot of kids never have an opportunity to get and hopefully protect our sport.